Hi Chan, happy to see these new essays from you. Let's take a look at what you've done here. Starting with the task one on rainfall, here's what you said. The line graph shows the level of rainfall in 2018 among three United Kingdom regions, England, Scotland, and Wales. Overall, it is clear to show that these three cities displayed a fluctuation trend throughout the year. However, each showed a different vibration pattern. All right, let's talk about these. First of all, you can't call them cities, okay, because they're actually countries, number one. Um, second of all, I thought this was rather strange, a different vibration pattern. They're not vibrating, okay? It's just the, the level of rain recorded. So that's the wrong expression to use totally. What you could have said here, just to give you some suggestions on, on uh, overviews that work better, it is clear that these three countries displayed considerable fluctuation. However, England on average had the highest rainfall. Now, why can I say that? Because England did not have any of the lows that Wales or Scotland had. So if you were to average the rainfall, it would be higher than that of the other two. Okay, so that would have been um, a good overview. So let's keep going. In Scotland, clearly the level of rainfall has shown the greatest fluctuation between 25 and 130 from January to April. I wouldn't have said has shown because it's 2018, so it's clearly in the past. So it should have just been showed. So showed the greatest fluctuation between 25 and 130 from January to April. The lowest rainfall was 25 in February before a sudden crash. Before a sudden crash in January? That doesn't make sense. F F no, that doesn't make sense. Uh, let's see. The lowest rainfall was in twenty five was twenty five in February. Um, following a a start of whatever that number is in January. Okay, so following a beginning point of what is that uh scotland started at like what 120 maybe so yeah you could have said that so the lowest rainfall is 25 amount in february uh following a um a rainfall of 120 ml in january that's it after that the rainfall soared to 135 ml in march and then plunged to at 40 in April. Level of rainfall peaked at 135 in March. You just said that. And September, you could have changed this around. After the each peaking, they plummeted after the following month. All right, there's problems with your language here. So I like that you talked about the peak in March and September. I don't like the repetition here. You missed an opportunity to maybe be a little more cohesive. So let's talk about how you could have done that. Okay, after that, the rainfall soared to 135 in March and then plunged to 40 in April. Uh, the March peak was one of two peaks, the second one being in September. Okay, so you could have done something like that. Um, or you could have said after that, the rainfall soared to the first of two peaks in March, okay? After which it plunged to 40 in April, a second peak uh, occurred in September. So there are a lot of different ways you could do that, okay? And then after each peak, rainfall plummeted the following month, okay? All right, so um, I have some concerns about the data points you picked. You um, you went into a lot of detail about January through April and then nothing for the rest of the year except for September. So I didn't think that was such a good choice, all right? There was a lot of focus on the first four months and then this piece in September and then that's it. So we'll talk about what I think could have been better data points here, but let's take a look at Wales. For Wales, the vibration mainly happened from April to August. Let's change vibration, make it fluctuation. For Wales, the fluctuation mainly occurred from April to August. Okay. The lowest rainfall throughout the year was in April at 25 before surging to 110 in June. After that, 
It peaked in July about 130, at about 135 before falling sharply to 45 in August. Surprisingly, rainfall remained stabilized between August and October at 45 after a sudden increase to above 100 in November. All right, so let's see what you're telling me here. So you start talking about April, then you talk about July, then you talk about August, and then October. All right, so here you're really focused on the latter half of the year. Scotland is blue. So you didn't really tell me anything about this low, did you? Did you mention it at all? Let's see. Wales. Wait, we're talking about... I'm confused who we're talking about here. We're talking about Wales. Okay, so Wales. All right, so the first thing you talk about in Wales is, is this, this low. Okay, fine. Let's see. Um... All right, here I would have liked something about the beginning of the year because you're focusing on the middle, but you're not really telling me about the beginning or the end. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. All right, for England, rainfall. Tell me again what it is because there are a lot of different things that this it could refer to. For England, rainfall fluctuated between 75 and 125 throughout the year. The least ml of rainfall was in June before 40 ml decreased from April. I don't understand that sentence at all. After that, a dramatic increase. All right, this is not a sentence. After that, there was a dramatic increase to 125 in July in the final half of the year. Uh, the fluctuation was similar. July, September, and December were the highest. No, Del July, September, and December were the months with the highest rainfall before 55 ml falling from previous months. I don't understand that. I don't understand what this 55 means. I'm confused by that. Uh, let's see. So you gave me a range here. That was good. You talked about June, you talked about April, you talked about July, you talked about September, December. Okay, so here I'm a little happier with the data points that you talked about. Let me tell you what I think the important data points here are. What you've got here is a year. Okay, and it's um, it's the story of rain throughout the year. So anytime you hear a story or anytime you tell a story, what are the key points that you want to mention? You want to mention the beginning, you want to mention the end, and then the important bits in the middle. And that's pretty much it, right? So you did some of that for some of this. So I thought that you mentioned the key points in England, but let me tell you what I think the key points in this graph are. So for England, they're the beginning and the end, okay? And then this low and these three peaks. And the last peak actually happens to be the last month. So that's it. It's one, two, three, four, five things you're going to talk about, okay? You can probably do that all in like three or four sentences. Then for England, no, sorry, for Scotland, it's one, two, three, four and five. That's, those are the points that are important. And then with Wales, I would say, again, the beginning, one, two, three, I agree with you here, four, and then five. Okay. Those are the things that I would talk about. So you're giving like a clear image throughout the year. You're telling what the lows are. You're telling what the highs are. And then any sort of weird anomaly like this plateau, it's the only one we have here. So you did highlight that. So I thought you picked out some good points. I thought in general that you you did get it, but not consistently. Um, and then of course there were problems with some of the language. Like there were a couple of areas that I just didn't really understand. Okay. So I want you to be careful about that as you progress and as you work on correcting these. All right. So um, a good attempt. Some definitely some good elements here, but also some things that I want you to work on. Let's take a look at fathers sitting home and mothers working. Fathers, I don't know why it's father, but fathers should be a main family provider when mother taking a housewife at home, coming from traditional belief, yet this trend has shown an adverse in modern society. Okay, the grammar here has really confused me. I don't understand what you're saying. Uh, so it, it's got some incoherence. Okay. I don't, I can't even attempt to change this because it doesn't, 
resemble anything that I can I can kind of try to figure out what you're saying. I really am afraid I can't. So let's keep going. I believe it would be a negative development because mental health would be harmful for males. Form social expectation. This is so we'll discuss the possible reasons and use examples as to demonstrate my opinion. Okay, this sentence is okay, other than that. S, I still don't understand this. Mental health would be harmful. What does that mean? That mental health is not good for men? Mental health is just the thing in general. I think what you're trying to say here is that this would create mental health issues for men. This is what I think you're trying to say. But again, I'm finding this introduction rather problematic. It's got three sentences and two of them have um, so many errors that I'm afraid I just don't understand what the message is. And that's pretty important. Let's keep going. There is ample evidence that the reason behind this trend is a mutual and longer decision-making process. On one hand, life satisfaction after their marriage could be a significant factor in their decision. For example, recent empirical research by Corpus Christi College shows that 70% of fathers feel highly satisfied by work-life balance in their marriage. Perhaps it creates more fathers staying at home. On the other hand, mother, no, mothers, mothers earn a higher salary in their employee. Mm, nope. Mothers earning a higher salary in their employment is also a critical factor. Uh, in becoming the primary breadwinner in the family because of the financial benefits. Most of the working mothers are reluctant to stay at home taking housework and child care management if their partners offer support to their career. Therefore, it's exclusively clear that there are not simple reasons behind this trend. All right, so... Um, obviously, grammar is creating a problem, okay? I'm definitely seeing some sentences that really aren't clear in English, okay? But then here too, let's talk about this. You're not really telling me what this paragraph is out. You're telling uh, about, you're saying there's ample evidence that the reason behind this trend, the reason behind which trend? So I'm confused, like what is it you're going to talk about? You can't use um, pronouns this like this. So let's try it a little different. Lee, uh, there is ample evidence that the reasons why more fathers are staying home and women are working is because, and this, again, I didn't understand. So what does that mean, mutual and longer decision-making process? It's unclear to me what that means, okay? Uh, maybe you could have said something like, because of different societal changes happening in the family. That would have made sense. It would have been like, okay, so what are these societal changes? That would have been clear, but this is not. And then what's the decision? Whose decision? What decision? I'm very confused about this. And what does this mean, life satisfaction after their marriage? Then you told me this, but I didn't understand how this was related. So fathers feel satisfied. So what does that have to do with them saying, hey, you know what? I'm not going to go work anymore outside. I'm going to stay home with our kids and you can work. So I was really very confused about a lot of this. Okay. And this too, like what, what, what's a lot, how, what's a connection? So if people feel happy, if men feel happy with a work-life balance, why does it make them stay at home? There's a lot happening here that I'm just not able to, to grasp. Okay. In my opinion, this trend would be a negative development because it would carry negative effects on psychological well-being. I don't like negative, negative in one sentence, okay? You could say detrimental. That would have been nice. This is largely because social norms expect father... Mm, social norms expect the father to be the primary bed, breadwinner for his family so that... Family, so, mm, okay, so family work, yeah, know that. So family work is less valued than paid employment. Most of the fathers would have hot, greater pressure, get rid of A, greater pressure from society because of the gender role deviance. For example, in the name of gender norms, society would show 
negative reactions and impressions to nonconformity no to nonconforming males whose self-esteem and other indicators of well-being would be negatively affected. Consequently, it is possible to state beyond doubt that the father's mental health would be negatively affected if they are that doesn't make sense. If they are nonconformity gender, no, no. If they follow nonconformist gender roles, norms, sorry. Okay, I feel like there's a lot of focus on the father here. There was no focus on the mother. A anytime you, you, you focus just on one and not the other, I feel like this essay becomes very kind of one-sided. I think you absolutely need to discuss both of them. So what does this mean for the mother? What does this mean for the father? Sometimes I see people talk just about the mothers, which I think is incorrect. And in this case, you've talked just about the fathers, which I also feel is incorrect, okay? There has to be a little bit of a balance that you're looking at it from both perspectives. Um, all right, so obviously we had some problems with some of the language, uh, but you thought it was negative. You thought that the pressure from society would really affect fathers and affect their mental well-being. To conclude, from the reasons and my opinion given, I don't like this, to conclude, from the reasons and examples given, I believe it is a cha mm -mm. I believe it is challenging for fathers. I don't understand this. It is predicted that families will have greater satisfaction if society can accept the gender deviances. All right, I'm not entirely clear about that, but okay. So. You should have a pretty good idea, Chan, about what's strong in this essay. There are some strengths here, but there are also a lot of weaknesses that I need you to kind of work on, all right? So go ahead and work on those issues and tell me if you have any questions about my comments, and we'll meet back here with your next set, okay? Good luck to you.